Every time we go to prayer and we place ourselves before the presence of God, whether it's in the blessed sacrament or even the personal um, experience of our own prayer in our like our rooms or si- wherever you experience that, guys, like God is always there. He's always giving Himself. He's always longing to speak to you. And so that's why it's so important. We have to retrain our hearts and our minds to to receive Him because of the immediate the, the temptation and I think the effect or like the 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 residue of immediate gratification because prayer does not work like that. It doesn't, you don't necessarily feel it in a human way emotionally. And so then we can, we just got to be careful of discouragement. So I do think it's really important. And how we do that practically is I think we start introducing small penances. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey, I'm Father Innocent. Hey, everyone. <laughs> I'm Father Angelus here. Back for a second episode in a row this week, next week, whatever it is. <laughs> good, to, <clears throat> good to have you with us. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for carving time out of your schedule, your schedule Ange, to well, be with us. Season started, boys. It started. We're out there. Um, vocation season vocation. whatever yeah uh, 20, 2024 is on the board that's right uh, there was a a couple of sisters from another religious community who work in vocations who came over here and they saw your vocations office and were they, they were jealous they were very jealous <laughs> it's a nice place it's bro. probably the coolest place in the house just besides the chef of course I mean it's definitely the best office in the community <laughs> wow. Not, All right. I, I agree. It's I, That's why I was in there. You were gone last week. Angela and I were hanging in, hanging out in there. I just like being in there. It's got to be. That's great. That's we, are, we are actually trying to limit time in there and kind of have some, you know, <laughs> as, just to kind of connect it to what we're talking but about. But it is, it is fun to be in there though. But I, but I will. Yeah. I will work a lot if I don't have limits. So that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. You know, I don't pray in my office anymore. I used to do that. And I didn't really pray. Like well. you don't have an interior life in your office. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I don't do my. Sorry, to rephrase. <laughs> I don't do meditation time in my office anymore. Nice one. Look at that. This is what we're talking about. You mean you change your environment? Growing in self knowledge. Way too instructions there. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Proud of you. Anyway, you want you're to kind talk? of leading the way on this stuff. I have that a funny. Not true. <laughs> yeah, you are. I have a funny observation. Oh yeah. That has to do with this slightly. There is a trend of <clears throat> there's a trend and a trend with the trend there's a trend of watching people play video games you are aware of this yeah people watch youtube to watch other people play video Correct. games that is the craziest thing i've ever heard so stupid the second trend <laughs> is to make fun of people <laughs> who do that who do this so there we go <laughs> We well, like wasn't calling anyone <laughs> stupid. He was like, just the reality. No, but I'm, I'm not calling anybody stupid. This is not personal. But like, what is that? Like, what is that? Like, wh- okay, yeah. Anyway, like but we got ourselves in a culture where is, that's what we spend our time doing. This is not in defense of <laughs> watching videos of people playing video games. I definitely know. That. I'll say this. I do not do that. I could see the appeal. Why? Just so you know. However, I was recently in a situation where two people who do not cook were watching cooking shows. Now tell me how that <laughs> is different? any better than watching people play video games. You're not going to eat the food. You're not going to cook uh, the they menu. They weren't like watching to learn how to cook it? Kind no. Of no okay. There's just watching people cook and eat. Because they like watching people cook and eat. How is and that that okay? So that, how is that any better? Okay, so I'm not saying it's better, but I do think it's apples and oranges. They're both fruit, but I think the examples. That's my point. And here's the thing, and because I, I do agree, there's I don't I think we're we're in, we're struggling in both examples. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we're struggling in both examples, but I do think, um, just considering deliverance ministry and. Like this is this could be alarming. Oh, this got heavy real fast. <laughs> no, because I think it's big. Like video games, like are are like technology, video games, violence. I think those are like a different reality. Uh huh. And so when that's why that's what gets me. It's just like video games are like again. It's the technology. It's it's Father Mark Marie, You know this. Like there are there are strategies to get people sucked into video games, addicted to video games, 
and for kids. And it's just, it's horrible. Like what, what happens? And so just to know that there's a whole culture now of like watching people play video games and, and the whole dynamic of the, the effect on the brain of, of, of technology, visual stuff like that. So that's why I'm like, okay, I, I see how they're different, but I do think the whole video game world is I think a bit more intense Are people than someone just watching like Rachel Ray, you know, but has, you know, doesn't intend to eat or cook what she's doing, you know? Do people addicted to cooking shows? I mean, well, to say this, first of all, we're not gonna, this isn't the space to unpack and have a whole discussion on video games. I do think that there's a lot of space for nuance to what you said. Do you agree? I do would you, agree. Do you agree? That was like a very broad, you sort of said that was very broadly, all video games are demonic. It's kind no. of what you said, just, just to am, be clear. I am, I can't be, yeah, there's a lot going on. So I will absolutely walk that back. Okay. <laughs> but I do think it's in, like, there's an intensity to video games we just gotta be careful of. Okay. So when we're, I don't think it's the same as cooking shows. That's what I said. And not all say. video games are yes, the same correct. as well. I also, not all video games are demonic. I think a lot of video games are addictive. Sure. So you can have, you can, and have, maybe like, can, you I can didn't. be Candy Crush is not demonic, but you can be addicted to Candy Crush. And that, that's, I mean, we know that's people a, who that's are. That's a problem. Right. So maybe that's what I would say. I, I, if I could, you know, two minutes ago, if I could walk it back, I wouldn't have started with the demonic. <laughs> okay. uh, but I do think addictive is where I want to be. It's sure. a little bit more the technology Designed has an effect. To, 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 yeah. For that's sure. what I would have said. Okay. But violence, maybe not demonic, but violent. That's what that I That has feel. an effect for sure. Fair enough. I would say as well, though, that uh, based on the popularity cooking of cooking shows and the sort of the net worth of people involved with in those cooking shows, there's something about that that's grabbing people and sucking them in as well. A little moment so, of vulnerability. I may watch cooking shows on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm just... They're fun. I'm just saying. I mean, that's, that was okay, my only... Basically, but, going back to the other, last week's show, that was my only option. So my whole thing is, maybe we just simple it down to this. I take back the demonic comment. <laughs> <laughs> Addic addiction. <coughs> Everybody okay? Is where we want to focus. Violence is where we want to focus. Um, but so I just to be very clear, I'm happy to walk that back. But I feel I feel intensely about it because I do think it's having a profound effect on our ability to live the contemplative life. Silence. There you go. Nice connection. And I don't know why I bring it up. I think it's a. I just thought it. It's because from what you watch on the plane. <coughs> Did you cook or eat any of those? It's just a funny well, you, thing. You know me though. I like cooking. Correct. So that's why I'm fascinated Correct. by that. I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. People, and it was the only thing I could watch on like the plane, honestly. honestly. I just think it's a funny, it's a funny. What is that? What is that? It's, Gosh. Because we're not even talking about playing video games. We're talking about watching people play video games. We're not talking about eating food. We're talking about watching people eat food. Oh, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's interesting. I'm that's just, saying. just like we're at a new level. Like, I just think, I just think everyone, all you cooking show people need to, Take a look in the mirror. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's who I came to save today. <laughs> that's the sword I'm going to fall on. All right. Well, thanks guys for that. That was fun, huh? That was a nice uh, intro. Um, 20 minutes in, here we go. All right. 29 minutes. Of, uh, anyway. Um, so thanks everybody for our, thank you benefactors. Thank you for continuing to give. And if possible, if you're not a monthly donor and you're able to give, that would be very helpful. If you already give and uh, you're able to increase a little bit, that would be super helpful as we have <coughs> slowly been uh, losing monthly benefactors. And you can do that at spiritjuice.org forward slash poco a poco. Thank you. I felt better about my tone there. Um, all right. So this is the next episode on on this kind of the series of like, okay, the, the series of acknowledging the two realities the reality of the great gift and uh, and the great beauty of really getting to know God uh, intimately and that we're made for this and called to it and that it's a real uh, it's a real it's a real experience that we can have here and now in this world and that it's ultimately what we're made for and it's kind of ultimately the beginning of if you will heaven um with tied now now with the other reality of um it's just really hard to not continue a variety of habits which uh, bring unnecessary noise into our lives. Some of them sinful, some of them gravely sinful, some of them not, Watch but, nonetheless, <laughs> but nonetheless, but nonetheless, not, not sinful. It, well, it depends how much you do it. Depends how much I'm you do kidding. it. I'm just kidding. I heard an exorcist say that 
You, it's, it's the, it's you the money. You did not. You did not. I would, no, I'm not going to let you put my buttons on like me. Oh. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't remember what we're saying. But okay, so we're talking about just some of the, like how if we want to actually respond generously, we want to actually live the way we want, want to live. Um, we want to respond to this movement in our hearts to really create space in our lives um, for contemplation, for quiet, for hearing the voice of the Lord, for voice of the Lord, for rehabilitating, if you will, the contemplative muscles that have been really um, probably sort of wounded and atrophied through lack of use um, just because of the, the the lifestyle and the culture we've grown up with. If we want to take that serious, okay, um, that's what we're talking about. And a, a quick review of like a behavior change is going to be the fruit of actually a change in one of these uh, four areas, right? A, the the a, a grap, grappling onto or an, a, a assenting to a new truth, a letting go of a, of a previously held lie, a strengthening of the will or an atrophying of the will, a um, a change in the passions or the emotions or desires, or a change in the environment. And so last week we talked about the change in the environment. Um, this week we're going to talk about just the will and strengthening the will, and. And again, the will is, I really, I don't see a, a way in which looking at will as a muscle um, fails in his analogy. I suppose just because uh, the will uh, has the aid of grace, um, which doesn't have an immediate corollary in the, the sort of the physical space. of uh, but But I think that Insofar as the will is the muscle, right? It's it's the muscle which allows us to to say yes or no. Uh, a strong will is what allows us to to say um, yes when it's difficult, and it allows us to say no when 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 whatever it is is very like is is appealing but but bad, right? Um, and so we want to actually have a lifestyle uh, which strengthens the will. Um, we can't place our hope immediately in the will. It's like, we're just going to do better next time. That's just not, that's a little bit naive and that's just not how it works. Um, but we want to create a lifestyle and have practice in our lives, which continually allow us um, to support the will and to actually strengthen the will so that we can go, grow in discipline, we can grow in freedom, we can, and then we can grow <laughs> in our sort of ability to make a, a free and total yes to the Lord at his invitation. And, and so what we'll talk about is just a little bit on the will and then we'll talk about just some practicals. Um, just anything you guys want to add on on the importance of the will, the importance of discipline. I mean, you're just, you're just going to come face to face with our freedom, right? Like that's we have free will, right? We can choose the good or not, right? And it is actually good to know that like we're actually made, and this is like a philosophical or like reality that we're actually made for the good. Like our our hearts and our minds and our our longings and desires. Uh, when we live in the truth, are we we know that we long for the good. We 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 desire it, right? It's, thank God, like it's written into us that the end we desire is to choose the good and to live and to to live in the truth about who we are, right? But because of sin and because of our own woundedness, right? There's there's a brokenness, right? There's you have all the deadly sins that are attacking that you 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 come across the fact that like actually we're weak, right? So while I'm I'm made for the good. And I desire it. I actually, you have to practice and you have to choose, right? That we're going to talk about discipline. Like that's the, and we've talked about this word a lot. That's the ascetical part of spirituality. It's it's a necessary part. And I think we've lost that. And we've talked about fasting before and penance, but it's a necessary part because we have to retrain our wills and we have to retrain like our wounded desires to know that, no, like I am made for the truth. I'm made for relationship. And now everything else has to follow that. The decisions I make have to follow that. And we have to, it takes time. And um, but the good news is that we're made for it, right? It's it's wired into us spiritually. Um, and it made made in the image and likeness of God. It's it's we got a lot going for us, but we just have to recognize with con concupiscence and the fall, there is something, there is something that's kind of broke, right? And so that's why I think it's a worthy conversation that we have to to re-strengthen re and we rework the muscles of our of our will and intellect. Even we have to like know what's we have to know what's true. We have to like do the work and and encountering that. But then I have to get up and practice every day, choosing. Um, and the good news is that your heart and mind will follow, right? As as we make these decisions, yeah. The only thing I would add is just uh, <clears throat> thinking about the life of the saints. I have this sticker here of Maximilian Kobe in front of me. And I, just, we, we say this often about him, but also about other saints. Just like 
this was was a guy at, at the end of his life who gave his life for his, someone in the concentration camp, right? And but what do people say about him though? Like he said, the reason he said was able to give his life then and and make this massive act of the will to give his life for somebody else is because every day of his religious life before that. He did the small things, the small acts of the will, the, the showing up to the prayer in time, the loving the brothers, to doing his chores, to doing that kind of work that just formed him, right? And so we 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 look at the lives of the saints and we look at holy people around us and like, and we have this kind of sense that like, wow, they're amazing and they do beautiful things and even you know, yeah, we we compare ourselves and we we want to be like them and we want to, but like, how do they do it? It was it wasn't in the glorious thing at the end of their life where they were able to be a martyr. It was it was the lead up. It was the daily decisions to give over um, their hearts and their wills and their their every part of them to the Lord, right? And so, just to be encouraged that like we want to do the big things, but it starts it starts in the small things, and it starts. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But the small acts of of surrender, the small acts of penance, the small acts of fasting, you know, that that allow allow our hearts and our wills to be formed, um, to really like believe that, like to to get up when my alarm goes off, like to really have hope that this is going to help me. To go with to go out to go without something really small at dinner that 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 act of the will is really going to help me you know so as we get into more practicals but just to have hope in that with the with a vision in mind that this is going to really be fruitful mm -hmm. so well, I mean <clears throat> I guess unless we have too much I don't know that we have too much more to say kind of if you will in theory about the will but kind of want to get into just some some practicals um, so in a second. I'll ask you guys just, okay, like what does, what does self-denial um, look like for, for the average listener and, um, and what does, yeah, what does kind of growing and discipline look like in a, in a kind of healthy and integrated way? Um, and so again, and, but just to, to back up, I think is, okay, this is um, part of the dignity of our, uh, of, of part of our dignity um, is to be free men and women, right? And and that that includes freedom on, on a lot of different levels. But one aspect of it is certainly um, the freedom to be able to like say yes to the Lord's invitation. And, and this this is at times going to include the freedom to say yes to doing hard things, and to be saying yes to to things which are hard on an ongoing like basis, right? So, so like a persevering yes to that which um, is not the easiest sort of option. Um, like we, 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 with God's grace, like we, we want to have that ability. And, and part of why that <coughs> is part of this conversation is um, a yes to the Lord, an ongoing yes to the Lord, a sacrificial yes to the Lord, um, a persevering sort of patient, like long suffering, yes to the Lord, um, in prayer is, is, is going to be like what we're working towards. Like there's many times in which prayer is going to require this. There's many times in which creating space for prayer is going to require the discipline to say no to, again, this sort of easy entertainment or distraction. Um, like just watch, like if you have the habit of, you know, again, of like scrolling on your phone first thing in the morning or at night, like experience yourself, try and keep the phone like like out of that room. And like, you'll see like, oh, this is actually hard to resist that. Like that's, uh, that's an act of the will ultimately at the service of a healthy environment, healthy soil, ultimately at the service of the contemplative life and, and intimacy with God. So we, so we want that. And I think, um, I think Christians as well, just one other concept, like we want to, they talk about in like the fitness space, things like that, just are generally probably just a healthy thing. Like we have to have a healthy relationship with delayed gratification, you know, of, okay, like there might be something that's going to feel the best right now, but we have to be able to say no to that, like the immediate sort of gratification at the service of like a greater good down the road. And the greater good down the road in this case is, um, intimacy and union with God, right? Um, and so so just to, in, in the spiritual life, to have this, to kind of lay the natural foundation of, of being men and women are capable of delayed gratification, which is going to um, also apply in, into the spiritual life, into the life of prayer. So I, I, I kind of send over to you guys, if you have any um, other sort of commentary on what I just added, 
or like where do we where do we begin with this? What do like what does this look like? I mean, I appreciate your your comments there, and I do have maybe some more thoughts on delayed gratification, sure, because I do think that's a huge thing. Um, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, delayed gratification is like the spiritual principle, um, or or just a way to talk about, um, kind of in a positive way to talk about the fact that we do struggle. <laughs> we currently struggle with like this desire for immediate gratification. Like, so, um, it's just another, I'm just making the point that it's another way to say the same thing, but we, we I think we all, and it, we all, we all can struggle with this because I do think we're talking about like chemicals in the brain. So like, it's hard, like when you, you're in, you use technology and you have an email, like it, something happens, like there's a dopamine rush and we've heard of this before. And so like, I want, I want to connect and I want to get the emails. I want to get the text. I like, there's something that's happening in us. So that just, I, I don't have any thoughts on that. Cause we've talked about it before. I'm just saying this is a, I understand that this is a huge struggle because we're not just talking about like fun stuff we like to look at. Um, gratification and the pleasure we get in in kind of social media and um, kind of the soothing effect of, of some sort of um, like the technology, movies, video games, there's something that happens in us. So I'm, j- I'm just saying that's like really difficult. We're actually, it, we're, we're fighting, um, I was going to say fighting a monster, but that's also intense. Like there's a lot going on there. Um, so that's why I think even more, we have to, we have to, we just have to recognize brothers is that I don't think, um, I, I think I can say this concretely. The reason why that's dangerous, like living in immediate gratification is because the spiritual life is not like that. <laughs> Though like the way God works, it's not immediate. And it's not like just, you can click. We've, we talked about this before, but you can't like click you just can't click it, the spiritual life on Amazon and like it just comes like three days later. Um, these The spiritual life and intimacy with God, it, t- it just takes time. And so when we live in this constant influx of noise and immediate gratification, I just think we need to be really honest that that does have a profound effect on our contemplative experience and are able to sit in prayer for long periods of time and wait for God or listen for God, or or like 15 minutes into prayer when I don't perceive anything's happening or I can't feel something, there's gonna be a temptation to run away or get tempted like this does not work. Prayer does not work. And brothers, that's just a lie, right? Every time we go to prayer and we place ourselves before the presence of God, whether it's in the blessed, blessed sacrament or even the personal um, experience of our own prayer in our, like our rooms or si- wherever you experience that, Guys, like God is always there. He's always giving himself. He's always longing to speak to you. And so that's why it's so important. We have to retrain our hearts and our minds to, to receive him because of the immediate, the, the temptation. And I think the effect or like the, the, the residue of immediate gratification, because prayer does not work like that. It doesn't, you don't necessarily feel it in a human way, emotionally, and so then we can, we just got to be careful of discouragement. So I do think it's really important. And how we do that practically is I think we start introducing small penances that that actually like create a distance that like, I actually want this, but I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to allow there to be like an un, uncomfortability, right? So like, I'm actually for like during the week from Monday to Saturday, like I'm actually not going to have dessert. Well, like father, but I like that. Well, yeah, that's the point. Only on Sunday, I'm going to have dessert and I'm going to delay gratification for sugar. And I'm going to practice like every single day saying, no, like I really want that right now, but I'm not going to grasp at it and control and, and satisfy that, that, that like, this is what I'm talking about food now, <laughs> but, but it's a good example. I'm going to delay that until Sunday. So we can start practicing like, like me being in, in control with the Lord rather than sugar or again, uh, social media or anything else. Like, again, we have to start practicing in small ways, creating a distance from, from the earthly desires, whether it's food, um, whether again, it's technology, um, whether any other type of noise, like I'm, I'm not, I'm going to, I want to listen to music right now, but I'm actually going to go on a run and I'm going to delay the gratification of having to like experience the sound, (laughs) Or the, yeah, or experience the uncomfortability of that. Those are just small things that can create a distance and help us to realize like how much we want it. You're gonna like you're gonna detox and you're gonna feel it. Like oh, I don't like that. 
Um, but I think it's the only way. It's the start doing small p- penances or start small fasting where we can start to notice our desires and create a healthy distance. We're like, no, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna eat sugar until this time um, in order to to grow in my inter- like in, in order to like die to myself in the small ways. The one thing I was thinking about is that like traditionally when you want to renew the culture, like uh, you like monasteries have been a place where like, hey, monasteries they like, generally renew things. And I was just thinking about like what we what can we learn from the monastic life or the religious life? And we've obviously talked about that, but I'm thinking like an or, having an orarium, thinking about like having a schedule every day that I make um, that's reasonable based on my state in life. But like going to bed and and getting up every morning at the same like going to bed at night, getting up in the morning generally at the same time. Like it's a, okay, I'm going to go to, go to bed at 10. Well, father, at well, you're practicing the will when you make a decision and plan your day that I'm going to bed at 10. Well, my buddies are hanging out. Okay. But we want to practice our will and make, make choices that, that exercise that muscle. I'm going to bed at 10 and then 6am comes to get ready for class. And I'm, I'm tired and I have, a, I have a hard time with the alarm clock. Well, I'm practicing my will to make a choice that when the alarm clock goes off, I get up, right? So, and then you, you have, but scheduling things throughout the day. Well, I have my class schedule and then at, at you know, after lunch, I'm going to do my holy hour. If, if you're going to pray throughout the day, but you don't have it scheduled in, there's no opportunity to like plan it and choose it. The, the, the reality of like, well, I'll, I'll get around to it or maybe I'll do this or maybe I'll do that. So I'm just wondering if this idea of being more scheduled allows us actually to make more choices. Like I'm going to, I'm going to schedule my exercise time. I'm going to schedule my work time. I'm going to schedule my, uh, hanging out with friend time. I'm going to schedule my meal time, whatever it is. And then I schedule it and then I make choices for it. It's, it's developing this thing that I said I was going to do this. And I don't really want to do it right now, or there's an interior bell, or I'm tired, or I'm busy, or something like that. But I make make the choice anyway, and that's the gift. One of the gifts of monastic life is it's incredibly ordered, and there's a freedom there. Yeah, like I know what I'm going to do, right? And so I just I wonder if that could be a good opportunity for people to like I'm going to schedule. An, I have, here's my orarium, a college student, share roommates. Here's our orarium. This is what we're going to do. We're gonna we're not going to mess around till midnight every night. It's as, as fun as that might be because we get, we said we were going to get up and we're going to exercise and we're going to pray before class. Okay. Make that choice. Well, it's hard. I get it because it's fun at night to mess around and do whatever. Right. I never did that in college. Um, but I, I think there could be something there. Just like families make an orarium, college students make an orarium, like have the reality of this is scheduled in. So my, my will, I can make choices for but it. But the hard thing is, Andrew, is that every you schedule every, we, we schedule every other thing Right, like for work, you have your scheduling meetings and that takes up a lot of our time. Like, why wouldn't we schedule the most important thing? And then like, you know, granted, if you work from eight to five, praise God, but like, but, but like that, that gets like, that gets a pride of place, you know, and maybe because We're of the- talking pr- about prayer? Uh, yeah, no, about- well, I was going to say like when guys, when people have a job, it's usually yeah. like from nine to five or whatever. And and I'm saying that's appropriate, but I'm, I'm saying too, like if- but like work gets pride of place, but, but why not? I mean, why not the most important thing with, with, which is our relationship with God that, that wouldn't also like get scheduled in that there's an Araya room that like, no, like I go to bed at 10 because I get up and pray and, and that's the most important thing I do. So everything else is scheduled around that. You know, like I, I know it's intense, but, but we do a lot of other things for the world that we're willing to upend our schedule for. But why wouldn't we say, no, like, this is my prayer. And again, it might just be a holy hour in the morning or, but I'm going to go to bed at 10 and get up at six because I, I pray in the morning and that's not discerned. Um, so anyway, I'm just agreeing with but you. But it's more the practical reality of the schedule helps me work on my will. It helps me make Shoot. choices, help me, helps me plan things and make choices and be faithful to it and allows this question of like, can I sustain this? can I develop this and can I actually start to make choices that are freed from the world or freed from struggles that I have being pulled into social media, being pulled into whatever it might be. So for everyone's, what's a, a disclaimer <laughs> and case in point made, I feel like my mind is at about 75%. <laughs> I'm getting confused quite a bit. In my, I'm like, I'm not quite sure what I'm saying. Um, just so we're clear. Cause again, I'm still kind of in You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. Um, and I feel I'm tired too. So that's why I feel this. I'm just like, so I feel this pretty deeply. So if I'm coming across with an edge, which I usually don't, and usually has the edge. Like, <laughs> but the salt, when the Sultan starts talking about silence, the Sultan <laughs> starts 
coming after people, calling everything demonic. <laughs> That's not what I said. I, back, I backtracked, bro. I took it back. <laughs> um. Anyway, I was going to keep playing on that, but I'm too slow to think of anything. <laughs> there's, this, is what, so this is how I want to frame it a little bit. There's, a, there's language in the culture right now about getting swole. You guys know what it means to get swole? Is that strong? Well, yeah, Father, yeah, yeah. Father Mark Mary also always has to tell us about the like the things in the culture because I'm like, I don't Getting swole. It's like you're in there getting a lift and you get the yeah, pump yeah, going yeah. and, you know. Or um, another one is like like gains don't sleep or something like that. That's one I'm like not sure exactly how it Like gains never sleep or gains don't sleep. <laughs> is right. We're talking about strengthening the will. And we get excited. <laughs> we get excited. Oh, that was about very these clear. Gains don't sleep. Yeah, totally. We get we we get excited about like getting getting the gains, you know? And we and we'll talk about going to what do you, I don't know if anyone actually says I'm gonna go get swole, but sometimes like ironically, people say that. And I think that we can we can look at a number of things. Um, if we look at it deeply and, and on a deeper level, like it's opportunities, if you will, to like get the gains, to like grow, to use whatever's given to us and to like grow like this muscle. And I'm going to go through one in particular, which is where I kind of been really specific about, but I'm going to kind of like lay out, a, um, sort of in a, in a somewhat, uh, uniform, where's the, what's the word I'm like, we're focused way, something that you guys just said, um, so I think like is when we're talking about strengthening the will and growing in this in this discipline and this freedom, if you and you're like getting these gains, like first and foremost, I definitely think some sort of uh, structured, disciplined wake up and bed and bedtime is like makes the most sense in the world. It's absolutely, absolutely like an ordinary um, sort of uh, exercise in discipline and an ordinary way to strengthen the will. I, 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 and I think for so many people, they have a hard time going to bed. That's just a, I think for, particularly for young people, they just have a hard time turning off and going to sleep. And because of that, then they also have a very hard time Getting up. waking up, you know? But I think this is, is we're talking about like getting gains. We're talking about strengthening the will. Like this is, this is just, it makes all the sense in the world, both for the will, but also practically to create space um, for prayer. <laughs> Um, sort of with that is I do think, um, sort of like a, a boundaried, uh, like entertainment so that there are, there are like discerned sort of previously set times that are boundaried of like, th these are the times where I have entertainment and outside of those times, like I don't, I don't have entertainment. Right. <laughs> and, and so again, this is, I, I understand that this is high and this is hard. Um, but this is, I think this is a great way to strengthen the will. Like, okay, like when I'm at school or when I'm at work, whatever it is, like I don't, I just don't have a side thing going on. I don't always pick up my phone and scroll every, you know, 45 minutes to see what's happening. Like I, I just, I have specific times I do that and, and, and I stick to those specific times. I think like Father Innocent said, like boundaried feasting. Like there are there are specific times or days, if you will, where I like I sort of indulge, where I have sugar, where I have dessert, things like that, um, or, even, have, or even alcohol, or even know? alcohol, yeah. right? But on you know perhaps like a normal you know Tuesday in ordinary time, like I just don't have dessert every night, um, and I think that's a great way to have <laughs> have a discipline and to have a practice. Um, I think I do think actually just consistent exercise is is a very kind of ordinary way to to have some uh, uh, self denial and to, to strengthen the will, uh, and this is the one I, I'm uh, two of the ones that I'm really going to get at here are um, fidelity to our sort of ordinary responsibilities, right? Particularly, I think like in class. Again, pretend you're a college student and you're going to class, and it's like okay. What is what is this going to, you know, I'm, I'm a communications major and I'm taking this thing in macroeconomics or whatever. Like, what does this have to do with my life? Um, and there can, there can be like, I think a lot of sincere sort of listeners, again, this can have equivalent at work or whatever. You're going to be in class and it's like, okay, this, this seems stupid. It doesn't seem like it's going to really affect my life. I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to, I'm just going to like online shop or I'm going to have my computer open and I'm going to be 
DMing or texting or or whatever it is that people are doing. And actually like if you if you are just like don't do that and and just be present, be present yeah. and just to listen. And even though <clears throat> okay, even though maybe the the content of this um, this lecture might not be something that you're going to be using down the road. Um, to be able to be still and to listen and to concentrate and to be focused and to be present. Like these are all of the muscles that we use in prayer and that this can turn into an opportunity to really have this discipline and to strengthen this, this muscle, particularly this, this contemplative sort of receptive muscle. And so this is one of those things I think in class, like, yeah, like you can be learning, but you can also be making the gains on like your ability to pray by just being there and being present. It's a great word. Um, I like it. And then, and then the last one is, is by obviously like daily prayer, like this, <laughs> this, like to pray every day and to have like a, an extended period of time, particularly of mental prayer. Like if it's going to work the muscle and it's going to grow the muscle. Um, and it's also going to provide, if you will, the proper nutrition so that the muscle can grow of, of grace and the life of God. So I think that that would be kind of an offering. Yeah, those are excellent. I you know that that sounds awesome. All and just say it's not a free for all, right? You don't get up in the morning and be like, okay, it's a kind of a free for all. We're just going to see what happens today. Yeah. You know, generally nothing gets done, right? So the reality <clears> of just the gift of being able to be more ordered, more planned, more scheduled allows you to, and more focused and present in the midst of your work. Um, that can't help but bless this, these muscles we're talking about, spiritual yes. I, I Again, Father Mark Mary, I think that that list is probably like the the go-to list if anybody needs, like those are, there's so much, uh, that's just like solid ground for concrete invitations <laughs> and kind of various forms of those things. Um, I do think, um, you just noted this in the, in the notes, I think it's important to note that, um, guys, it's like we can't, we, we have we have to be careful in the spiritual life that if if we kind of if we overemphasize the fact that it's all about the will right, right? in the sense like i'm just gonna that's actually a heresy we know that <laughs> that you're just gonna choose your way to holiness or i'm just gonna all right i'm just gonna get up every day i'm gonna i'm gonna own this and like and and do this myself i'm gonna make a set of decisions and then i'm gonna be holy that's actually heresy that's absolutely what we're not and we, we're not saying that um which i i think it's pretty clear but let me just say that that we because grace builds on nature, that we are talking about the, the, our hearts and the formation of our humanity that actually will dispose us to receive grace in a deeper way, right? That it's not just making a decision for prayer. It's actually the discipline that, I'll, that opens my, me up. And I want to say like exposes my heart to receive grace. It's always a relationship. I'm making decisions um, like through the inspiration of grace. Like it's, you can only do this because God's a lot, a lot like inspiring it, but also we're sustained through it, right? Like it's all about the relationship that God, the, that God gives us grace so we can respond to him in prayer and these desires. And we have to use our humanity at the service of those things, right? So that's what we're talking about. We're, we're, we're talking about the formation of our will to make decisions that we, how we can grow in our relationship with God in prayer, in the human disciplines, so we can open ourselves up, open our hearts up, open our emotions up, open our minds up, right? And be more available to what God is doing. Um, so I think that's clear. I just think it's it's helpful because we're not just, you can't just like earn this yeah. and, and choose this. It's with the grace of God, making, um, strengthening our wills so um, we can be more available to all that God is doing. Um, and I, yeah, it's just beautiful. Yeah, I wonder if I'm just thinking if there's anything else to add that, to that. But I think that, yeah, that's just obviously it's something that I, I think is important is that it's um, discipline is not a, an, a synonym for holiness. Yeah. Right. But it is, but it is part of. It's part of the journey. The journey. Because of our humanity, we have to, because, and because of the fall, like we have to live. I love how you said like discipleship, no discipleship without discipline. It's a part of the recipe. But um, but we have to be careful of the rigidity to think I'm just going to like discipline myself into holiness. Right. That it's it's relationship. It's discipline is at the service of intimacy and relationship. Right. And and we can just like use some of these tools to help us do that. But I think it's I think it's necessary for any relationship actually, but particularly with God. Cool. Sweet. Any uh, last? No. No, I feel good. I you, I think the practicals are definitely there. I think, I think yeah, I feel good about it. I feel good. Well, your your seventy five percent is pretty strong, Father Mark Mary. Gosh, 
I know. (laughs) 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 Uh, Struggling. Struggling. All right. uh, Can somebody pray? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, Jesus. We 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 praise you and adore you and love you. We do ask for more of your grace, Lord. More of you. Um, inspire these areas in our hearts where we just long to be more disciplined. We long to um, just give you access to every decision we make. Uh, we give you access to our weakness. Um, we just long to make daily choices um, that help us grow in our relationship with you and our ability to grow in prayer and to experience you throughout the day. Um, we do ask for more light, Jesus, in, in what you desire, these these practicalities where you desire us to grow. Jesus, we, we just give you permission um, to teach us um, about these and, and what and how you long for us to strengthen our will so that we can choose you more and more every day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, <laughs> amen. Uh, shout out to some of our friends in the Czech Republic. Here we have some listeners in Czech Republic. Some of our guys are out there celebrating Brother Jan's final vows. Congratulations, Brother Jan. And uh, thanks to, to everyone out there. And also shout out to uh, Justin, who's one of the chaplain's assistants currently in Sicily and gave us a coin from his his post out there. So thanks for that. I love Sweet. this. Great, great letter. And I, I love um, base, base. Excuse me. I called it a post. It's a base. <laughs> base. And uh, base. what's... He's uh he's Navy slash Marine Corps. So anyway, shots fired towards the Army and Air Force. <laughs> um, but thanks everybody for listening and thanks for being with us. And we'll see you again next week. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well And I know 